Hi, I'm Randy Hollenbeck, and this is the Music Roundtable. Today on the show, we have Jordan White from rock band Jane and the Jungle. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me on today. Going strong at the core. And you're looking the way I remember from the first night. Will it be the same? I want to ask you about um, how you got started with music, uh, what age, and what got you into music. So um, that's actually a long question, or um, a long answer to that. But uh, to try to keep it a little short, I don't know how much uh, time I can go into it, but I started singing at the age of two, not very well, but I had a, a very bad speech problem and I could um, like mumble my words better. And my mom bought me this like Disney karaoke toy that I would sing at the stores. And that's kind of what I did. And I just always loved singing. And in elementary school, I was in choir and we had music, uh, was a special. And I was really, really shy and had terrible stage fright. But it was one of those things where I wanted to do it because it made me really um, scared. And I would turn bright red and I would freeze up and uh, I, nothing would come out. And it took a lot, a lot of years for me to finally not shake or have that waffling uh, voice. And I, my parents put me in voice lessons in middle school through high school. Uh, classical. And um, yeah, I started kind of coming out of my shell and just really working hard at it. Like I was never like the best singer, but I've always, I wanted to do it. And I also grew up uh, doing karaoke in the back of my um, backyard. So my grandfather built me the stage and I would just sing to all the karaoke songs, 80s, 90s, like early 2000s, like Britney Spears, Celine Dion, uh, Pat Benatar. So I grew up singing that and like neighbors from like streets away would be able to hear me. And meanwhile, like I'm so shy, like I could like never perform in front of an audience. And so um, in high school, I was in drama and choir and cheerleading. And then finally, like, I found, like, my passion for um, drama and being a character on stage. I think that really helped take that stage fright out of um, my fear that I had. And I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So I um, graduated with a BFA in musical theater. And my teachers at school, I went to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York and LA. And they told me, you'll never make it on Broadway. Your voice, you don't have that witchy Broadway sound. And we just think that you should go uh, a different career path. But um, we've noticed that you're a good writer. And why don't you start taking writing classes? when all my other friends were, you know, the character and like the school plays and all that. So that's what I did. It was sad. Like I was heartbroken to hear that. And I was in these like poetry classes and um, it was called like spit class. So they would, um, you would rap your poetry, which I could not do. And the teacher was nice enough to be like, Jordan, like you can't um, rap. And I don't want to have to make you rap. So why don't you get a guitar, learn a couple chords, 
and just seeing your poetry because I think that's going to be the best for you. So I did that and my parents got me a guitar that year for Christmas and I took lessons with the Shred Mistress in West Hollywood and a month later I was doing coffee houses in Hollywood and um, just loved it and I found my little uh, niche doing that and then I moved home to Phoenix to save money to become a songwriter and moved to Nashville because I thought that that's what songwriters are supposed to do and um, yeah Brian Dallas is the guitar player we went to kindergarten through high school together but never spoke never were friends but he ended up coming to one of my acoustic shows I was doing and uh, asked me to form a band and that was in 2013 and then a lot still has happened between then and now but that is kind of the nutshell Okay. So when he came and asked you to form a band, did he say, Hey, let's write some songs together or what, how, how did that happen? Yeah. So he's like, yeah, I think that you and me should try to form a band, but let's, you know, meet and see if we have any writing chemistry and see uh, how that goes. So he did. And we ended up, ended up writing a song called gold that day. And um, it was really good. And we were really surprised that we had really good musical chemistry. And then we just wrote a handful of songs. And then, oh, sorry about that. I have um, people texting. But, um, but yeah, we had uh, many musicians that would come and go. And our little project that we started that was basically like a garage rock band at that time. I wanted to ask you about your uh, American Idol audition. How, how did that come about? So actually, I was nominated for it. And it would have been something that I would not have done otherwise. Just because um, even though I think I broke off that stage fright that I used to have as a child, I just still think that it's heartbreaking I don't know how I would have been able to continue on if, you know, the judges were to tell me to like pack up my bags and go home. And I don't know how the other people do it, but I was just like, oh, I'll never do that. But since I was nominated and they're like, oh, come on, give it a try. And I told them from day one of, hey, I'm an original artist, not a karaoke singer. And um, if you guys want an original artist that is a little bit different than what you have, then I'm all for it. I think I was the oldest one. And they're like, no, we really want that. Uh, come along. And um, you're kind of like the front runner type thing. Very long story. But um, yeah, they kind of, um, I guess to put it nicely, like crushed me during my audition. And it just really left me like blindsided the things that they had to say. And then um, they pretty much told me that I was like heart without a heart and that I was like the scariest performance that they've ever seen. And this is after like 10 auditions. And then finally you make it to the television part and you think that you have it going and they prep you and you think you know. And then Ryan Seacrest is outside. And um, yeah, they had me like bawling in tears. And finally like Lionel Richie he it was like 15 minutes of that like it was just like a bang bang like ridiculous things that they were saying to me and finally he um Lionel was like you know Jordan you're to just put it nicely I know that you're kind of not really getting the feedback was just really confusing he was like you know uh this show is about molding young uh performers into stars and quite frankly you're already you already know who you are you already have your stage person of you already have it going on you're just not a fit for what American Idol is and then uh, it took me probably like a lot of months to let that sink in but long story short um, I'm thankful for the experience and I think it worked out for the best uh, to not have gone down that road 
with American Idol because now I'm able to do Jane in the Jungle and um, yeah, follow my own path that I'm still trying to figure out. And I think you've gotten a lot better since that. Like um, now you got like a song on MTV. Did you trouble? Yeah, so it's on MTV Spankin' New on uh, Pluto TV. So I'll, uh, I try to tune in a little bit every day and I have not seen it yet. So if any of you guys have seen it, like, let me know, because I think that is really awesome. And that is probably one of our biggest wins uh, as a band. gotten any songs on Sirius XM radio? So actually, yes. So we have had um, two of our songs on the Sirius XM channel 29, the underground garage. Um, Rodney on the rocks has spun us a few times. So that has been really cool. And uh, I think we're about um, this close to being on octane. But um, but yeah, we still have, you know, a, a ways to, you know, we still have hard work to do. Now, what have you guys done since uh, the lockdown? Have you, I don't know, has your state been able to play any shows there? Or do you do live streams? Or what, what have you been doing this whole year? So we've been doing a lot of live streams and a lot of writing and a lot of getting together. And we were doing like the skinny margaritas to go. So I'd say that that was a huge inspiration uh, just to zone out and just have fun with, you know, each other's presence. And we realized quickly that during the pandemic, that music was going to be something that was going to keep us sane during it. And so we met once a week and that was really the only thing that we had that felt normal. And so I'm so thankful for that. And at that time it felt really natural. Like we weren't trying to be impressive. We were just doing these live streams on Instagram or our phone. We were one of the very first uh, people here in town, like doing live streams at that time. And now it almost, it's this huge production now to do a live stream. And uh, we still do live streams, but they're a lot, they look different than what we were doing. And we do try to keep it just like low key and um, casual because uh, that's kind of who we are. And, and yeah, we're, we're, it's, it's, I would say this time right now where we are today feels so much weirder to me than last year during this time, if that makes any sense. But Currently now, it's like, what are you doing? We can't do anything right. It's just such a weird world to be an artist right now. Now, is your state lifting any restrictions or anything? Oh, we are all open. So, uh, yeah, yeah, total, totally open. Do you have any shows planned down the road? Um, No, we don't have any yet. I hope that we can by the end of the year, we were trying to figure out if we could be playing at the Viper Room maybe in October or September, but we're just really focused on rolling out our next singles and how that works and looks like, and still how shows work, because um, as an independent artist, we are not participating in any of the festivals or the bigger type shows. We're just overlooked right now. And so we're just trying to figure out what the best plan is moving ahead. Do you have an album in the works or are you just going to keep on releasing singles? So we just, we have one single that we'll be putting out in a couple months or at least this summer. 
And then we have another single and uh, we're working on the plan to figure out how we could put together an album, but that will be um, down the road. I noticed in uh, your video, you had like a brass knuckle mic holder. Is that something you, is that something you designed for yourself? I wish. So I actually, <laughs> um, now I can kind of design one, but I found that if you have you ever been to the NAM show? So it was this like company that did um, like microphone like accessories. And it's like, oh, this is so cool. And then they did these microphones that they could uh, do like a whole 360. And it's like, oh my, now looking back, I really wish I bought the mic stand. I think it was like hundreds of dollars. It might have been even like a few thousands of dollars. And I'm like, oh, I just can't afford that. But I ended up buying the mic. And he's like, oh, I think you're one of the only girls that have bought the mic holder. Usually like metal bit guys do that. Because I've never seen somebody with that. And I was like, oh, great. And I think they even gave me like a little discount. And um, yeah, now I wish I could have like a whole like row of them to choose from i was listening to your song animal the other day it got like a pat benatar kind of feel to it did you make it that way or is that one of your influences or what i would say she's definitely an influence and in there somewhere for sure uh it's funny that you say that because this next one that song that we're um, we're working on right now it is you will definitely hear the pat influence in this one so i'll have to give it to you so you can uh, give your opinion what are your other influences i always say that that is the hardest question when anyone ever asks me that so i don't know if it comes like easy for other people to just like whip them on out but there was never like a artist or band that really ever was an influence like i said i kind of stumbled upon it and growing up, there was all these influences that I really had no clue about. Like um, like I said, just through the karaoke stuff, Disney, and just always hearing music. But, um, and I went to a few concerts, but like I said, there was never like, oh yeah, the Spice Girls really inspired me to be Jane in the Jungle. It's just nothing like that. But I think when you hear our music, you'll kind of pick out influences of, oh, wow, okay, I can you probably listen to the Cranberries or the Smashing Pumpkins growing up. And the Cranberry Smashing Pumpkin uh, influenced one is going to be coming out maybe towards fall or next year at some point, but you'll hear that influence. And since people always ask us so often, like our influences, and we're always just have this huge question mark about that, we are trying to include that in our writing and kind of show some influence like trouble when we were writing that band practice the guys asked me they're like you know you should really try to sound like Dave Grohl <laughs> and I laughed and I'm like okay and like I've never done that before and it probably doesn't sound like Dave Grohl at all but it was really fun like trying to belt out like him and just trying to add that into our writing of oh yeah okay well let's try to have a little influence um here and there there's a video for uh called one time that you did and you're walking down the street and you're just singing and it's just you singing and an acoustic guitar and just in that video it's it's real powerful. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's it's really cool how you did that that video with the song. Yeah, it was um, a very weird thing that we just did. And I would say that that's kind of our specialty is just writing these songs that is just super like lo-fi, no production and um, no auto-tune because I hate my voice when it's on auto-tune. But you can hear that like authentic, 
like realness in that song and it would be it's a song that people would say don't release but we wanted to release it and it was a few years ago and it was like my birthday present to myself and that house actually um was my grandparents house and i'm wearing my um grandmother's jacket and so it was just it kind of was just this weird thing that came together and it's actually some people's favorite song which i think is really cool and interesting now do you ever play that out we do so it's funny because we'll do like wine acoustic shows sometimes or we'll have a moment where the show where it is that acoustic guitar and it's just a different vibe and yeah we'll, we'll play it sometimes depending on the show and if anyone requests it too i used to tr since we haven't done shows in so long i used to try to do on instagram hey you know like dm us like the ones that you want to hear if you're coming to this show and we'll you know try to play it if people really want to hear it what are you currently listening to as far as new music well i'm listening to music on spotify <laughs> is there anything out there we should know about um well i've listened to the lilith czar have you checked her out oh well um, you should definitely check out her album. I think she's really unique because she actually, her song is playing on Octane. And I would say that we're kind of in the same realm as her where she is hard rock. It's weird because the hard rock and the rock genres are so weird right now with alternative being kind of um, more pop. Um, I wouldn't say she's like a hard metal artist, but she's playing on Octane and I think that opens the door for um, women and artists like myself, where we are a little too hard for alternative, but maybe a little soft for um, like Octane. So I think that's really interesting. And do you know the name of that song by chance? Anarchy. Yeah, check that out. But yeah, I listened to a bunch of Spotify playlists and I'll just go down the list and check out artists that I've never heard before. And I try to listen to um, as much music as I can. How do you guys write? Do you just sit down with like an acoustic guitar or do you already have words wrote out or how, how do you go about writing a song? So each song is different. Sometimes I'll have ideas that I'll just kind of do on my phone is like voice memos. But lately the guys will just be riffing on something and um, I'll just kind of ad lib and then the songs come together really fast. Like Trouble was written in like 30 minutes and usually our best songs are really fast, which I always think is funny because sometimes people say that the lyrics are simple, which I guess, yeah, you could say that the lyrics are quite simple, but but oftentimes the lyrics are coming together in 30 minutes, too. And when it just clicks, it happens, and um, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I think that is the best choice. But um, then sometimes I'll really um, piece together the song, and I'll spend hours trying to get the right words together, which sometimes works. But I think that there is a magic to um, just having that feeling and vibe that just comes naturally in the moment. I think that there's something really special about that. Where can we get a hold of you at? Uh, Instagram, Facebook, websites? Yeah, so you can go to our website, janeinthejungle.com. We're on Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, Pandora, Instagram, Twitter. We're trying to the TikTok thing. So if you're on TikTok and want to do a video, there's some really sweet kids right now doing these TikTok videos of anti-bullying to trouble. And I think that that's really cool. So that is our TikTok challenge that we're doing, is doing these little 
the skit with our song in the background of telling a bully to go away and that um, don't pick on people. I think that's all the questions I got. Um, if you got anything else to add. Well, just uh, thanks so much, everybody, for all the love and support and listening. And I hope that you check it out. And uh, Trouble is, I would say, it tears on that hard rock vein and that we haven't really touched. And so we're really excited for that. And our next song, don't hate us for it, but it's a little more alternative, but still a uh, rock. And we're just trying to figure it out. And we just appreciate you guys uh, hanging in with us. And honestly, we couldn't do it without you guys for cheering us on and um, listening to the music because that really is what makes us want to keep creating and being a part of uh, this world. Where is the music that is hiding the beat? Where are the children that To live it all.